Namaste welcome back to Stita Pragna channel and we are in the series of videos where we are doing analysis on AWS cloud practitioner exam questions we have till now finished about 88 of them i hope you are following and watching each video very carefully if you have done those 88 then the rest of this however many 100 we are going to um look at you will already know the answer because the way we did this 88 questions is not just go through the question and answer we have also uh, learned about the options that are not correct as well so that we can uh, answer the questions where those options might be the right answer right okay that being said let's get into this video and in this video we are going to cover about 21 or 22 of these questions and uh, we will round figure it to 110 all right so the first question which abilities or benefits of the aws cloud again this goes back to our aws uh, well architected framework i think by now you you should have memorized it because i told you to memorize this so it is asking about one of these principles we have uh, plenty of them we have total six pillars and each pillar has at least five of this so there are about 30 of them and uh, you have to memorize them there is no other option so that being said okay so the, which they are asking what are the uh, benefits okay maybe uh, we will uh, easily be able to um, eliminate some of them okay so let's let's go through them trade variable expenses for capital expenses this is wrong because it is the other way around when you are moving from on premise to cloud you are actually trading capital expenses with variable expenses because as we know cloud is what pay as you go variable it's not capital you don't put any you don't have to spend any capital expenditure so we can cancel that out deploy globally in minutes yes this is true we already know that plan capacity in advance of deployments this we don't have to uh, with on premise makes sense because you have to buy servers before uh, ahead of time and etc but with this you don't have to even if you see uh, you know capacity improvement all you need to do is spin up another one and add them so you don't but let's check let's check the other ones first take advantage of economies of scale yes uh, what this is telling is like when you are going and buying a particular server for on premise you are the only customer not only customer but you might be buying only for your company uh, but it, it you won't get offers just because there are another 100 companies buying them from their uh, that particular store as well right so but cloud is not like that economies of scale means whoever buys on aws the number of customers that aws uh, will have are you know it will increase the the cheaper they are going to sell their services okay that is what economies of scale means right for example if amazon has 1000 customers now and when it reaches to 100k whatever service they are offering they will make it much cheaper because their margin will still be more than whatever they are gaining so uh, as a customer when we join obviously we are going to enjoy that lower price even though Uh, you know we are buying one or two ec2 instances so that is economies of scale reduce dependencies on network connectivity um no not really you will you will still have to have the network connectivity so those are the two options deploy globally in minutes take advantage of economies of scale and if you go and check the well architected framework you will see those somewhere um let me see Yeah, here glo- glo- global global winners one of them and uh, what is the other one take advantage i think it will be in such cost where is cost oh okay, it is not showing it here uh, it's not here right it should be part of this cost optimization or something like that but uh, let me see aws economies of scale Yeah, see, it's six advantage. Oh, it is 
advantages of cloud computing never mind this is something different uh, you need to learn this as well so as you can see benefit from massive scales of um, economies of scale that is one answer global advantage you might be thinking oh the first option no look at this very fairly it they flipped it here it's fi- trading fixed to variable there it is variable for so that is the wrong answer so okay so go through these as well six advantages of cloud computing question number 90 a company needs to run a workload for several batch image rendering rendering applications it is acceptable for the workload to experience downtime okay after reading this you should be able to answer you don't even have to read which amazon ec2 pricing model would be most possible okay i told you some keywords tips remember whenever you see uh, the application can have some downtime or uh, the application can have uh, failures intermittent failures that is fine or if it says it is a stateless application directly you need to go for spot instances obviously they are going to ask most cost effective okay and these are expensive then that because we already know spot inst- instances are the cheapest but to you know to pick that option the question should have something like the application is stateless or it can have intermittent failures and it can have some downtime question number 91 a company wants to estimate its expected monthly aws cost the company always also wants to find out the cost of a new set of instances and services which AWS tool can the company okay they want to find out cost of new set of instances okay and if you remember what is the keyword that i told you to answer these billing questions first of all you need to identify is it before migration or after migration so as you can clearly see they want to estimate it before moving to that and there is only one tool if it is before which is price calculator so this is an easy way to remember it don't worry about other we already know what others are budgets is where you put a limit like if i am going if my account on particular resource is just 10 dollars send me an alert or email something like that and then trust advisor is used for the best practices it will give you recommendations uh come it will compare your services or resources with best practices marketplace you know where third party vendors can sell their tools and pricing calculator we already know it is a web based planning tool that you can use to create estimates for your aws use cases you can use it to model your solutions before building them explore the aws service price points and you can review the calculation behind your estimates question number 92 a company is expecting a short term spike in internet traffic for its applications during the traffic increase the application cannot be interrupted so you see this right the application cannot be interrupted so this keyword will eliminate spot instances so you can just go ahead without reading the rest of the question cross this out the company also needs to minimize cost and maximize flexibility which is it to okay so as this is the keyword to eliminate spot instances the short term spike uh, is a keyword to go and pick on demand because on demand is the only thing that among these two where it can handle short term spike whether it is short term or long term doesn't mind uh, they said short term because to confuse you with spot instances but we will eliminate spot instances based on this keyword cannot be interrupted okay a uh, reserved it's already reserved you, even if you have a spike reserved can't do much uh, the application will only fail time out or something like that so it's always on demand whenever you see there is a, a question uh, the keyword spike question number 93 a company wants to update its online data processing application by implementing container based services okay uh, that run for 4 hours at a time the company does not want to provision or manage server instance which means they are talking about serverless they want serverless container based service okay what is that i mean you can blindly go and pick fargate because lambda is we know it's serverless but it is not a container based uh, a container based service ec2 it is not serverless and beanstalk 
it is but it is uh, does not implement container based services okay uh, i mean it's not serverless i mean you are going to spin up uh, when you you know spin being stuff for your application then it is going to behind the scenes uh, provision ec2 alp etc load balancing and all uh, which is not serverless i mean like you are going to spin those services again that won't meet this requirement which is run for 4 hours at a time because even using ec2 you can do but you are going to provision it uh, whereas here it is talking about looking for serverless because running for 4 hours is a uh, good use case for serverless compared with provisioning a service and we know forget is a technology that you can use with uh, amazon ecs to run containers without having to manage servers or clusters of amazon ec2 instances and uh, with forget you no longer have to provision configure or scale clusters of virtual machines to run containers question number 94 a company is migrating to the aws cloud to meet storage needs the company wants to optimize cost based on the amount of storage that the company uses which aws offering or benefit will meet these requirements okay more most cost effectively similar to compute uh, if you want to save compute the best option is what saving span right similarly here they are talking about uh they want to you know save money based on the amount of storage for example uh if they are storing like 10 gb then it will be a particular price then if it is 50 gb then it is going to be another price right so aws does provide that kind of offer for some storage solutions which is under volume based discounts okay so that's the answer volume based discounts is something where based on your uh, volume of data you are going to get discount the more volume the more data you are going to save then you will get more discounts that is the volume based discounts free tier you know the, you know aws free tier is has nothing to do with that which is free obviously savings plan it has uh, savings plan is for compute uh, pay as you go is like you know um, you will pay for the things that you are using again it, it doesn't come under Uh, saving costs or optimizing cost based on amount of storage okay d is the answer 95 a developer who has no aws cloud experience wants to use aws technology to build a web application okay so they're just talking about like somebody who don't have aws knowledge and uh, uh, anything like that they just they have to just build a web application i mean we already know one of the tool or we know two apps one is uh, beanstalk you can do and the another one is lightsail which we have already seen multiple times in in our options okay so lightsail it's just simply you will go and do couple of clicks and then you will have a website so that's lightsail which is designed to provide a simple and straight forward way to launch and manage virtual private servers in the aws cloud it offers pre configured virtual servers with a selection of operating systems databases and development stacks the service provides an intuitive web based management console making it easy for developers to get started quickly without the need for in depth knowledge of aws services as sage maker we know it is uh, used to learn machine learning uh, models lambda is a serverless compute where you can run uh, your code uh a amazon ecs is a container uh, managing deploying service question number 96 which pillar of aws well architected framework focuses on the ability to uh, run workloads gain insight into operations and continuously improve supporting processes and procedures well we already know this by now you should already know it is it comes under operational excellence excellence if you answered this wrong then you should go to the pillars and then go through the pillars again uh, there is no other way to uh, identify this answer but you can check the uh, you know points under that particular pillar you know ability to run workloads efficiently gain insight into operations and continuously improve supporting process and this is all come under operations it doesn't come under performance efficiency or anything like that reliability is something when something fails you should have a way to you know uh, 
uh, handle the application automatically those kind of things come under reliability and anything to do with cost comes under cost optimization question number 97 which aws services are examples of no sql database so i think this is a no brainer by now okay so as you can see these are all relational databases we know aurora relational database rds itself in the name says relational database service redshift it is a data warehouse uh, it's a no columnar database but it's still a data warehouse solution so that leaves us with these two question number 98 which tasks are responsibility of the customer so this is ask again talking about the shared responsibility which we have went through multiple times okay what are the responsibilities of the customer anything that has to do with the security of the applications and then patching the guest operating system so let's go through each and every option patching rds operating system no because rds you already know we are not responsible for maintaining the underlying operating system we are responsible for uh that database uh, user authentication data etc on the rds because it is a what is it it's a fully managed service which means we don't patch it upgrade the firmware of the netting infrastructure anything that has to do with infrastructure i told you it's aws responsibility encryption yes we are uh, responsible for the data encryption Uh, and then maintain physical access control in a aws region again anything that says physical infrastructure we don't take care of it then the other option is our answer which is grant least privilege access to iam users yes that is our responsibility question number 99 which aws service feature or tool helps visualize the pattern of aws pattern okay um if you remember anything that has to do with visualizing i think i told you cost explorer is the answer okay so cost explorer you can uh, it is it actually has an easy to use interface that lets you visualize understand and manage your aws costs and usage over time uh, you can uh, get started quickly by creating custom reports that analyze cost and usage data analyze your data at a high level Uh, or dive deeper into your cost and usage data to identify trends pinpoint cost drivers and detect anomalies and anomalies you can use that for doing all that stuff uh, cloud trail we already know uh, it it logs each and every api call that uh, happens on the user account consolidated billing you can uh, consolidate the billing at an organization level amazon dev pay i don't know what this service is i never heard about it let's see what dev pay is okay it is a simple to use online billing and account management service that makes it easy for businesses to sell applications that are built in or run on top of so okay uh, i think it has nothing to do with it but i think it is a third part third parties can use this to uh, have the billing and for the things that are selling in marketplace 100 yay we reached 100 question if you made it this far awesome i know you can do it let's finish another 100 in the next coming week shall we which factors affect costs in the aws cloud all right so i think this is this this will be a biased question i guess because this varies so let's look at this i think we have seen a similar question recently uh, somewhere but remember any inbound data transfers without uh, acceleration i think you when you use acceleration again it will, it is going to be charged but they are talking about without so inbound data it does it and the number of unused lambda functions no you can create hundred of lambda functions if you are not running them lambda functions only when you run you will be build the number of configured a amazon s3 buckets same thing similar to lambda functions you can create hundred of buckets but if you don't have any file stored in it you won't be charged at all okay that leaves us with these two options read them outbound data transfers yes with or without acceleration yes it will be charged compute resources that are currently in use obviously this is a no brainer option a 101 which perspective of the aws cloud adaptation framework encourages the development of well architected cloud focused applications well here we have go again cloud adaptation framework i think in every every 20 questions i think we at least see one or two questions 
related to cloud adaptation framework well architected framework shared responsibility and so on and so forth so by now i think you should have figured it out that you have to memorize these things okay so the uh, perspective is the platform perspective you can go and check it uh, if you are not sure about it i think i will have somewhere here dubai i don't have it this is the last time okay i'm getting it up this is the last time i will be showing guys next time uh, you have to do it on your own okay so the question says development of well architected uh, cloud focused applications okay so as you can see build an enterprise grade scalable hybrid cloud platform modernize existing and implement new cloud native solutions okay uh, even if you go through the others i don't think it will fit this description cloud native solutions cloud focused applications okay that tells you what is the answer one or two which controls are of the responsibility of both wow i think isn't it like two or three questions ago we spoke about the responsibilities so they are talking about responsibility of both aws so there are some common shared responsibilities they are asking what are they okay physical again physical is aws we have gone through 100 times choice of aws region where data is stored it is customer choice uh, it is not aws choice so it is not the answer account structures okay the uh, the way you structure your accounts again this is customer responsibility not aws so that leaves us with these two options you might be wondering ah oh, i thought patch management is aws yes aws responsibility is patching the uh, host operating system not the guest operating system if you are spinning an ec2 which means that is a guest operating uh, that is a guest machine which means whatever operating system you are choosing to have on the ec2 is called a guest operating system i already explained in one of the question uh, so go watch that video if you have not already done um, so configuration management yes based on the type of service uh, we kind of both even aws does this configuration for some of them then we will do the configuration from others it depends on whether it is a infrastructure as a service solution or if it is a fully managed uh, product as a service solution question number 103 an auditor is preparing for an annual security audit the auditor requests certification details for a company's aws hosted resources across multiple availability zones in the us east one region how should the company respond to the auditor's request wow this seems like a more like a solution sort question than a cloud practitioner question but that's fine let's go through it they are just talking about uh, uh, certification details uh, of uh, hosted service that are across multiple availability zones okay so you, you need to know uh, what are what is the tool what is the tool that can have a uh, uh, certification details complaints related uh, certificates etc there is only one tool that does it which is aws artifact okay so you can just go and pick that answer uh, if you want to look at other options they are talking about opening a support ticket to request no we don't need to do that again this is talking about again opening a service ticket then explain to the auditor that aws does not need to be audited because that is so wrong okay so aws artifact if it didn't cover it till now it is just has all the compliance related documents uh, for example like iso 9000 whatever those documents are okay so it acts as aws and isc security and compliance report they will be in a single place here the aws artifact 104 which aws service or storage class provides low cost long term data storage what do you guys think low cost long term i told you whenever it is low cost and if it has glacier deep archive just pick that because that is the lowest cost storage 
they are not talking anything else so we will go with that and uh, i told you about this this is just a gateway it is it doesn't store data amazon mq is a queue service i don't know why they even have this snowball is a physical device this is not a long term this is for migration services 105 a company wants the ability to automatically acquire resources as needed and release the resources when they are no longer needed i think we did this question i think this is a repeated question which cloud concept obviously if you followed that other question then you would know it is elasticity it is not availability availability means no matter if you know if something fails you still have the application available durability reliability we already went through that if we if you didn't then you should take this seriously because we have covered this in number of times so okay, let me open up that link i told you to at least go through this once availability you can read through it i am not going to you can pause the video and read it and then we have uh, durability here we go and then reliability okay here we go so go through this at least once you need to understand this because i think these are repeated at least 10 times by now a company has a compliance requirement to record and evaluate configuration changes i think this you don't even have to read the rest of the question as well as perform remediation actions on aws resources because we know the particular tool which is aws config uh secrets manager we know it main, maintains secrets uh you can store passwords api secret uh, secrets um database for username password etc crowd tail it logs all user activity or sorry ap you know api uh calls on the user account trusted advisor again gives recommendations based on the best practices question number 107 what is the recommended use case for amazon ec2 on demand instances okay so they are talking about amazon remember the keyword i said if there is an spike most of the times whenever you have spikes in your uh, un- uh, you know in your load application load or you know uh, where you have unpredictable loads then you will use it so let's go through which option is going to talk about that steady state no steady state you will always go with reserved instances are dedicated a work node that can be interrupted interrupted we use it what do we use spot instances my bad okay remember these keywords right steady state reserved instances interrupted spot instances workload that is expected to run for longer than 1 year again this is reserved instances sorry then we are left with the option unpredictable okay any time you hear unpredictable spike that's when you will use on demand instances 108 a company deploys its application on ec2 instances the application occasionally experiences sudden increases in demand the company wants to ensure that its application can respond to changes in demand at the lowest possible cost which aws service or tool will meet these requirements okay we already know the answer which is the auto scale okay so what is we if you remember the auto scale what is it if you have a particular let's say load of let's say 50 and then it, you have already ec2 instances that are running or let's say uh, you have ec2 instance that is already running at 100% now you have more load on, more load coming so the ec2 cannot handle so when you have such kind of uh, scenarios what you would do before hand itself is you will place an auto scaling in front of the ec2 and then you will say 
based on certain condition let's say if my existing cpu usage level is more than 50% then spin another reset instance that's how you are going to handle it compute optimizer it optimizes your uh, compute uh, power on your uh, on your cloud and it will suggest to you like okay if you switch your load is like this i'm analyzing it uh you know based on your previous usage if you move to this particular type then you will save money so that does that cost explorer is just where you visualize have dashboards cost related well architected framework we already know it has pillars principles etc right has nothing to do with sudden increases in demand i don't know why they even put it there one not nine which aws service can a company use to find security and compliance reports including international organization for standard we just spoke about this Uh, there is only one service where it stores security and compliance reports and what not and if you have not already subscribed to this channel please do so it will really help me and it will at least tell me and it encourages me to uh, do these videos more frequently like kind of every day or the every other day if you look at the frequency that i am uploading uh, but if i don't see you know many people subscribing or liking or commenting then i would not know that whether you guys are interested in these videos or not when you do that at least i will know like okay these guys are interested that's why they are either subscribing or liking or commenting then that will tell me indirectly that i have to post these videos more frequently okay so i mean if you are subscribed while watching this video i will know it uh, so that way i would know like okay you know people are watching this and they want to watch more videos all right um, if you already did subscribe thank you very much if you not please do so uh, that being said and uh, the answer you already know which is artifact and these tools doesn't do that they don't store cloud watch logging config where you will create uh, rules to check configuration changes in your environment audit manager i think i don't know what audit manager is really i never heard about it but the name suggests it is something to do with managing audits continually audit your aws usage to simplify risk and compliance assessment okay this looks like does uh, do something to do with compliance but it doesn't uh, store those uh, reports and what not okay one time this is the last question for this video uh, a company needs to apply security rules to specific amazon ec2 instances security rules to instances which service well remember what is the firewall at an instance level and what is the firewall at a subnet level ring a bell all right at a subnet level it is network acls at an instance level it is security groups okay remember it that way shield ddos attacks my bad firewall manager at a network level okay so that's the answer and this is the last video and thank you very much uh, for keeping up with these videos and watching them uh, do suggest me if i have to make any other certification videos or uh, if i have to do correct something include something if you don't like the explanation do you want me to just go through the question and answers let me know all that i will take feedback into consideration and thank you very much for uh, being here and watching these videos uh, and uh, all the best for your exam and uh, see you in the next one